Hello, and welcome back to episode two of Over Analyzing the Wire. Today we are going to be looking at the scene where Stringer Bell uh, tries to commission Slim Charles for a hit on Clay Davis. I, I would explain it a little further, but it'll all get talked about in the scene. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about if you've seen the show. A great scene. You know, when you're talking about wa The Wire, I think Bunk Moreland really says it best with... Oh, Jesus. Oh, my pants are wet. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, Yo! Man. Yeah. It's a great scene. <laughs> nah, he say nobody, so you have to wait right here. What you mean, wait right here? You know who I am, boy? Man, say you want to see Avon. Making me wait to see my own partner. He knew, strength. Fuck that. A lot of new faces around here, man. Way too many, you ask me. Get the fuck out of here. Already, you see Stringer Bell. This is really him at his lowest. He's just been taken for the 250 grand by Clay Davis. He's completely out of his element. He comes home. Not that he's been out of ball. He's always been in Baltimore, but he's back in the streets now. And these people don't even recognize him. The guy doesn't even leave until Slim Charles gives him the nod. Even though Stringer clearly ranks Slim Charles, as we all know. Where are you going at? He'll be along shortly. That's good, because I came to see you anyway. What you need? Just a little note here. Stringer Bell, classy suit and tie businessman, is drinking liquor out of a, a plastic cup. <laughs> Avon just jumps in, but he waits, watching from the shadows. Good King does not reveal his hand. You don't need to. I need you to hit somebody. Who we hitting? Clay Davis. The Clay Davis? Downtown Clay Davis? That's supposed to mean something to me, man. That nigga need to be got. Shit, straight murder ain't no thing. But this here's some assassination nigga, I shit. I told man. you, you getting some. I love this too, that uh, Slim Charles is able to differentiate between a murder and an assassination. There is a clear difference. An assassination is somebody of influence, normally a political figure. Murder is just, you know, uh, what they're used to in their uh, neck of the woods. But great that Slim points out the, the, the clear difference here. Somebody, you getting them. I ain't asking. Damn, String, I don't know. Nigga, I gotta remind her who the fuck you work for. Hey, uh. I think Slim gonna have to sit this one out, boss. Boss. <laughs> I think this is the only time in the entire show where Avon actually pulls rank on Stringer. And you can already see here, his whole demeanor has changed. All of his confidence is gone. Now his shame is coming on. His, he's already embarrassed. So you finna go hit a state senator now, huh? Yo. You kill a downtown nigga like that, the whole world gonna stand up and take notice. I'm talking about the state police, federals, all of that. <laughs> you need a day at a jackal type motherfucker basically to do some shit like that, not a rumble tumble nigga like Slim. That nigga took out my. Day of the Jackal is a book by Frederick Forsyth in which the titular character, codenamed the Jackal, has to go through um, fake IDs costumes, custom-made weapons to slip into France, all to get one shot at the president. It's actually a very good book. Uh, but obviously, uh, Slim Charles is very skilled, but he's he's no jackal. Honey, man. I seen it coming. Well, <laughs> he gotta go. Nah, you a fuck... And I really like this part, too, is like... People, Stringer is very uh, smart in many regards, but I think what really sets this scene apart here is Avon is so confident in what he knows in the person he is and Stringer's just not. He's now out of his element. He's in a place he doesn't understand. And I think what you see a lot with um, Avon, especially the scenes where he has with Cuddy, is I think Avon is a little bit scared to go beyond what he knows. I think that's why he has such a good relationship with Cuddy. I I'm not going to get into that here, actually. I'll probably do a future video on that because that's a whole other breakdown, but... But Avon saw this whole thing coming. A Avon is incredibly intelligent. 
Very smart. Fucking businessman, you want to handle it like that. You don't want to get all gangster wild with it and shit, right? And the, the look on his face. But Avon's completely right. You want to take the business, you want to go legit, you want to do everything the correct legal way, but then when it don't go your way, you're going to come running back here and you want to do all the gangster shit. You can't have it both ways. It's one or the other. Avon is completely right about this. And it's heartbreaking to see this look on String's face. I mean, he's just, you know, for them, it's not about the 250 grand because, I mean, I think in the first season they said they're breaking in 25 million a year. But it's, a, it's the pride thing. It's the fact that, you know, it's embarrassing that he got took. You know, Stringer is so smart. We've seen him outplay everybody. He gets along with Prop Joe. He's always the one making moves. He, you know, they say back in season one with the chessboard, he's the, the queen piece, the go get shit done piece. But completely out of his element here. And you can see it on his face. It's just, this is Stringer Bell at his absolute lowest. What I tell you about playing them fucking away games? Great line. Yeah. They saw your ghetto ass coming from miles away, nigga. You got a fucking beef with them? That shit is on you. So, we aim... Uh, and Avon just sticks it to him right at the end there. I mean, it's just... Uh, it, it, it's a sad scene, really. It's just a completely different Stringer Bell than we're used to seeing. Completely disorganized, completely out of his element. But in the same respect, the businessman should not be coming to them, telling them that they should hit a state senator. And the gangsters, the ones who are supposed to be a little more radical or off the chain, however you want to say it, are the ones being like, are you are you joking? Are you out of your mind right now, Stringer? And, you know, not that I'm sure he knows it's a bad idea. It's just his pride is so wounded at this point. He thought he was ready to... Uh, ready to run and like clay davis says you crawl walk and then run it's it's really it's really a complete turnabout for a stringer at the end of season three it, it's it's sad but all things that could have been avoided if he was um not so eager to get out of the drug game i guess i don't know if you could really call it a bad thing i, I don't know that that's a whole another thing but anyway that's my uh, breakdown of this scene i think this is one of the best scenes i didn't even really talk about slim charles in it which i think slim charles's whole demeanor also is just great he has enough influence to still be in the room but not enough to actually speak or anything like that you know but he could it's there for the conversation uh avon always just the king knows who he is and stringer bell just at his at his worst completely lost but that's my breakdown, uh, episode two, if you liked it. Um, you know, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I plan on making a ton of more of these. Like I said, nobody's nobody's really talking about The Wire, and I love talking about The Wire. I could talk about this all day. I'm, I'm planning on breaking down tons and tons of scenes. Um, and if I missed anything or you have any other insights or comments, please leave them down below because I'm always up for a discussion about The Wire. I wish I had more people in my life to talk about this with. Um, but maybe it's a good thing I don't. It'd probably find me like, you know, I, I would get into like a wire coma. And I, I mean, I could talk about this shit all day. I really could. Uh, greatest show, I think, ever from a writing standpoint. David Simon himself describes as, I think he describes it as a stealing, stealing life is what he describes his writing style as. Uh, very researched and all that. Ed Burns, a fantastic show. Don't know if we'll ever see anything quite like this ever again. Uh, but also, if you've got anything that's even close, I mean, send it over to me, and I'm going to try not to compare it against The Wire. Anyway, that's all I got today. If you're still listening, thank you for listening this long. I appreciate it. Like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, ring the bell, I guess. You'll get notifications for future videos if you like the content. And uh, I will see you all in the next one. Peace.